Hey everyone, I filmed my postpartum depression experience video and that will be going up tomorrow and I realized that it may be beneficial to go ahead and have a video out there saying what is postpartum depression because I do talk about just my personal experience and if someone's looking up a video in regards to postpartum depression, chances are they know what it is. But some of you may not know what it is or you just want to hear a little bit more. So I thought that I would make a video telling you more about it. And I know that this is going to be an abundance of videos because my experience video is cut into two and then this will be another video. But I feel like it'll all go together. And if you're interested in knowing what postpartum depression is but you don't care to watch my postpartum experience video, then this will work. And then if you don't care to listen to this but watch my experience video, then that's fine. You can choose. But just in case you want more information, I'm just going to talk about some of that here. I am not a professional at all. I don't have any medical training. And I, I just know what I've done research on and having experienced postpartum depression um, I've done some research, so I'm just going to give you that information. Obviously, you can go on the internet and you can Google to your heart's content and pretty much find the same information. So what is postpartum depression? So I'm going to read you a general description of what it is. Postpartum depression is moderate to severe depression in a woman after she has given birth. It may occur soon after delivery or up to a year later. Most of the time, it occurs within the first three months after delivery. Causes, incidents, and risk factors. Now, there are still studies going on for postpartum depression. For the longest time, people didn't really acknowledge postpartum depression as postpartum depression. And I'm just so glad that more and more people are talking about it and more and more studies are being done. Um, there is something that I just read yesterday that I'll share towards the end of this video, but most of the time this information is how um, postpartum is described. The exact causes of postpartum depression are unknown. Changes in hormone levels during and after pregnancy may affect a woman's mood. Many non-hormonal factors may also affect mood during this period. Changes in your body from pregnancy and delivery. Changes in work and social relationships. Having less time and freedom to yourself. Lack of sleep worries about your ability to be a good mother. You may have a higher chance of postpartum depression if you are under age 20, abuse alcohol, take illegal substances, or smoke. These also cause serious medical health risks for the baby. You did not plan the pregnancy or had mixed feelings about the pregnancy, had depression, bipolar disorder, or an anxiety disorder before your pregnancy or with a previous pregnancy, had a stressful event during the pregnancy or delivery, including personal illness, death or illness of a loved one, a difficult or emergency delivery, premature delivery, or illness or birth defect in the baby. Have a close family member who has had depression or anxiety. Have a poor relationship with your significant other or are single. Have money or housing problems. Have little support from friends or your spouse or partner. So a lot of these seem like it may be circumstantial, what's going on with your life. There is a website called postpartumprogress.com and it does a really good job of explaining the symptoms. I think it's great to know like the general things to look for, but this I think not only tells you what it is, but kind of also validates how you feel. And so I will read this to you as well. What does it feel like to have postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety? What are the symptoms? How do you know when you have it? We're going to talk about the signs of postpartum depression anxiety, but in plain mama English. We will use the words moms hear in their heads when they think about what the heck is happening to them, words that make sense. When you read the two lists below, one for postpartum depression and the one after it for postpartum anxiety and OCD, keep in mind a few very important things. You may not be experiencing all the symptoms listed below or even most of them. Postpartum depression and anxiety are not a one-size-fits-all illness. You experience may be focused on just a few of the symptoms and you may not have others at all. Many people have a feeling like the one listed below every now and then for a day or two. We all have bad days. 
Postpartum depression and anxiety are not just bad days. Women with postpartum depression or anxiety have symptoms like these most of the time for a period of at least two weeks or longer. And these symptoms interfere with the ability to function on a daily basis. Postpartum depression and anxiety are sometimes comorbid. This means you have a bit of both or all of both. If you have symptoms on both lists, that's not out of the ordinary. You may have postpartum depression if you have had a baby within the last 12 months and are experiencing some of these symptoms. You feel overwhelmed. Not like, hey, this new mom thing is hard. More like, I can't do this and I'm never going to be able to do this. You feel like you just can't handle being a mother. In fact, you may be wondering whether you should have become a mother in the first place. You feel guilty because you believe you should be handling new motherhood better than this. You feel like your baby deserves better. You worry whether your baby can tell that you feel so bad or that you are crying so much or that you don't feel the happiness or connection that you thought you would. You may wonder whether your baby would be better off without you. You don't feel bonded to your baby. You're not having that mythical mommy bliss that you see on TV or read about in magazines. Not everyone with postpartum depression feels this way, but many do. You can't understand why this is happening. You are very confused and scared. You feel irritated or angry. You have no patience. Everything annoys you. You feel resentment toward your baby or your partner or your friends who don't have babies. You feel out of control rage. You feel sadness to the depths of your soul. You can't stop crying. You feel nothing, emptiness and numbness. You are just going through the motions. You feel hopeless, like the situation will never ever get better. You feel weak and defective, like a failure. You can't bring yourself to eat, or perhaps the only thing that makes you feel better is eating. You can't sleep when the baby sleeps, nor can you sleep at any other time. Or maybe you can fall asleep, but you wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep no matter how tired you are. Or maybe all you can do is sleep and you can't seem to stay awake to get the most basic things done. Whichever it is, your sleeping is completely screwed up and it's not just because you have a newborn. You can't concentrate, you can't focus, you can't think of the words you want to say. You can't remember what you were supposed to do. You can't make a decision. You feel like you're in a fog. You feel disconnected. You feel strangely apart from everyone for some reason, like there's an invisible wall between you and the rest of the world. Maybe you're doing everything right. You are exercising, you're taking your vitamins, you, ha you have a healthy spirituality, you do yoga. You're thinking, why can't I just get over this? You feel like you should be able to snap out of it, but you can't. You might be having thoughts of running away and leaving your family behind, or you've thought of driving off the road or taking too many pills or finding some other way to end this misery. You know something is wrong. You may not know you have a perinatal mood or anxiety disorder, but you know the way you are feeling is not right. You think you've gone crazy. You are afraid that this is your new reality and that you've lost the old you forever. You're afraid that if you reach out for help, people will judge you or that your baby will be taken away. That is a lot, and I can say that I personally experienced quite a few of those. What this should tell you is that you are not alone, and you are not a freak, and you are not highly unusual. If you are having these feelings and symptoms, and it is possible you are experiencing common illnesses that 15-20% to 20 of new mothers have, and they are completely treatable. One last but very important thing. If you are having moments where it seems like you can see or hear things no one else does, if you are feeling paranoid as if others are out to get you, if you are feeling that you or your baby are somehow related to the devil or God in some way, or if you are having thoughts of harming yourself or others, it is important to reach out for help now. These symptoms require immediate attention as they could be signs of postpartum psychosis. If you have these symptoms, your illness has the potential to take over and lead you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. In order to avoid that, it is important to reach out for help right away so that trained professionals can help you get stabilized and healthy. That last part is very important. Postpartum psychosis can be very, very dangerous. If you've ever read a news story about a woman harming her children and they've diagnosed her with postpartum depression, more often than not, it is actually postpartum psychosis. And then I want to read a part of um, this website to you. It's about intrusive thoughts. And this is something I struggled a lot with. And again, I didn't know anything about this. 
and I wish, wish, wish that I had this, this site at my disposal when I was going through it. The title is, Does Having Scary Thoughts Mean You'll Act on Them? And then this is an email that the author got. The entire trajectory of my recovery would have been different if I had known about the intrusive thoughts when I had my oldest. I thought that having the thoughts meant that I was capable of doing the things I thought about. In other words, if I thought about my kids drowning in the tub, it meant that I would drown them. I avoided getting help for months because I was afraid that they, my doctor, my husband, etc., would take my daughter away if they knew what I was thinking. If I had known these sort of thoughts were common, I would have been able to get help much sooner. But as a first time mother, I had never heard of such a thing. Thank you for talking about this so other moms don't have to suffer the way we did. And the same as being a first time mom and not knowing that something like this can be normal, a mother who, say, is having her third baby and didn't have this during the first two might think that something is is wrong with her because she didn't experience it before but that's not true the author then responds to that saying this is exactly what happened to me when i had postpartum ocd i had never heard of intrusive thoughts i thought i was now a terrible monster and i believed that since i was having these thoughts it must mean i could follow through on them that was wrong but no one ever told me that I also thought my child would be taken away. I wish, wish, wish this was discussed more. There's no reason for mothers to continue to suffer. And then there is a um, really good wrap up at the end of this. When scary thoughts feel inconsistent with your belief in who you essentially are, your character and your personality, they are referred to as ego dystonic thoughts. When a thought is ego dystonic, it is in conflict with whom you fundamentally believe yourself to be. This inconsistency creates piercing anxiety. However, this distress, as disturbing as it feels to you, provides reassurance that these thoughts are, are anxiety-driven and not psychotic. In fact, your anxiety is an indication that you are aware of the difference between right and wrong. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I'll put the links below so that you can go back and refer to them, save them, bookmark them, or um, use it to educate other people. I realized after making my um my video experience there's so much that like i would forget to say and you know i can't go back and like edit every single thing because chances are i'm going to forget to say something at some point but it does give you a pretty good view of what was going on in my life at that time and if you have any questions or want to talk more please let me know so that is it I hope I am not forgetting anything else. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Hey, so I had finished the video and then I forgot to talk to you about the recent thing that I read about that I want to share with you. And so the title um, is Researchers Find Genes That Predict Postpartum Depression. Postpartum depression is really a combo pack of nature and nurture rather than what we have thought of as solely a chemical imbalance. PPD is likely your genes and a part of the cause is likely what type of trauma, stress, or environmental changes you have experienced that has caused certain of your genes to be expressed differently. You aren't born with one set of genes that never change. Believe it or not, we know this thanks to the science of epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of chemical reactions that switch parts of your genome off and on at strategic times and locations and what causes those chemical reactions to occur. As explained in easy to understand terms by the week, your genes aren't a fixed predetermined program simply passed from one generation to the next. Instead, genes can be turned on and off by experiences and environment. John Hopkins has released the results of a small study this morning that they say shows two particular gene alterations that highly predict postpartum depression. As described in their news release, John Hopkins researchers say that they have discovered specific chemical alterations in two genes that when present during pregnancy, reliably predict whether a woman will develop postpartum depression. The epigenetic modifications which alter the way genes function without changing the underlying DNA sequence can apparently be detected in the blood of pregnant women during any trimester, potentially providing a simple way to foretell depression in the weeks after giving birth and an opportunity to intervene before symptoms become debilitating. The idea is that some of us have brains that may be much more reactive to changes in estrogen during pregnancy than others, which may be why some of us get postpartum depressions while others don't. The researchers noticed that women who develop postpartum depression exhibited 
stronger epigenetic changes in those genes that are most responsive to estrogen, suggesting that these women are more sensitive to the hormone's effects. Specifically, two genes were most highly correlated with the development of postpartum depression, and then they named those two, uh, predicted with 85% certainty which women will become ill. Isn't that crazy? If a future blood test can identify those women who have a high risk for PPD, then we can do a lot to help prevent it or at least reduce its severity and length by educating them and their families in advance and creating a safety net that can start immediate effective treatment at the first sign of symptoms. A larger study is needed. This one included only 51 pregnant women. I just read this study last night and I thought that that was really interesting and wanted to share. So I will also include this in the down bar too as well also plus the rest.